You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, TV. TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Crossbones After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Crossbones After Show. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Crossbones After Show right here on AfterBuzz TV. Excited to have you back for episode three after a week off. I am your host, Bobby DeMiro. Thank you so much for joining us again, guys. And I am joined, as always, by the wonderful Kelly McInerney, fresh off performing comedy, doing stand-up. This is what she does for a living, you guys. Not a bad gig. Hey, you know, gotta gotta do what you gotta do. Gotta do what you love. Yeah. Unless you hate it. No, I like it. Okay, good. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you gotta tell us at the end of the show when you're performing next week. We should have done that like two weeks ago, but you were going to New York. It's okay. It's it doesn't okay. matter. If you follow her on Twitter, you'll learn about her future performances. Yeah. We'll do that at the end of the I show, I tweet too. that all the time, so yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, speaking of Twitter, if you're on Twitter and you want to tweet something besides something about this show, and if you haven't already gotten it yet, tweet about it because everybody else is. Maria's new book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. I was just told it is right now today number nine on the New York Times bestseller list, which is really good. It's even been as high as, I think, number three. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So it's doing pretty pretty well. A lot of great stuff on getting fit. It is how I lost 40 pounds and kept it off and how you can too. Like you look at Maria, how did she lose 40 pounds? She wasn't even like When? Yeah, well, where? She looks the same. It would, I mean, looks she does, which is a she, good thing. Yeah, she looks different. Like she lost a lot. Yeah. You can tell she lost weight, but she's always looked good and you're like, "Wow, yeah, yeah. okay." But um it's it's legit. The book's legit. There's a lot of good information in here and and occasionally for the fellows a good picture too. Hey, hey. So, you know, no complaining. What can I say? And uh, if you're uh, on Amazon right now, you're a Barnes & Noble or whatever, you can pick that book up. So if you like After Buzz, support Maria's stuff, support our stuff, and there you go. Yeah. All right, guys, let's get into the show today. The Man Who Killed Blackbeard, thank you for joining us with the week off since this was preempted last week by design. Crossbones was off. It is back this week. A lot to talk about today. I'm a little thankful, to be honest, Kelly, that they only did one storyline. I know there were offshoots. We're going to talk everything, but more or less, the storyline was... Kate and what happened to her and everything that kind of came away from that. Yeah. The first two episodes were confusing because there was a million different pieces. Well, I like the second episode. I feel like there was kind of one, two storylines yeah. maybe. This yeah. one, I feel like it was one big one, but then the little ones just confused me even more. Yeah. Well, so, the little ones are going to be interesting because those are the weird ones that I kind of didn't see coming that we need to flesh out. About, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but let's start with the big one. Let's start about Kate. Uh, before Kate gets kidnapped, before she goes on the voyage to that weird Father Daniel and then gets, you know, not, I shouldn't say kidnapped, she gets captured. Uh, the first thing we see of Kate is, uh, let's use the professional euphemism, she was making love with Mr. Tom Lowe, and yeah. I literally wrote down in my notes, Kate and Tom making love, dot, 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 that escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know when we left them in episode two, they were kissing, uh -huh. but Still, I, I I didn't expect to see, maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't expect to see Kate outwardly cheating on her husband that soon, that quickly. And I didn't get the chem. I get some chemistry between them, but it wasn't like tear Boom. down the walls. Like yeah. sexual tension, exactly. chemistry. Yeah, I feel the same way. I was like, what? Just like, really? Why well, would really? you do that? Really? And James seems like a nice guy. Like, why? I mean, how do you cheat on a guy who's like, he's, 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 disabled in some way yeah. he's got physical problems he's very smart he does you know he's trying with her yeah i feel like she doesn't make sense because she went to tom to help to have him help her for with her husband and she, her husband's like oh i need more love well tom said to I, she yeah. needs more love you're giving love to the wrong person now. You're not following. Maybe that was this 18th, early 18th century euphemism for like, we're an open couple. We're swinging that. No, I mean, I'm yeah. sure it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. But I don't know. The point, the point is, though, it, it seemed to escalate so quickly between them. And I get the tension, but I didn't feel sexual tension. And we no. knew it was going to happen, but not this fast. But, yeah, I agree. I agree. It, not this fast. I don't understand, but... You know what? I didn't write it, and I'm not Kate or Tom, so I guess well, I can't comment on that situation. Just watching yep. <laughs> um, but let's talk, Kate, because after they are finished making love, Kate says she has to go, which is a baller move, by the way, because this shows me 
in a subtle way, she obviously doesn't care for him or like him. I know she likes him as a friend, as a colleague, whatever you want to say, right. but if there was romantic interest there, she'd want to stay more, wouldn't she? I don't know. I feel like maybe she thinks she wears the pants, kind of, you know, where she's like, I care for you, but I've got things to do. The three female pilot pirates, pilots, the three yeah. female pirates we've seen in this episode kind of wear the pants in some ways. Yeah. You would have to be. You mm -hmm. would have to wear the pants or you're going to be one of the prostitutes. Yeah, that's why, know? well, that's why the, I feel like there's so few female pirates because yeah. it's hard to live in a man's world. Could you be a female pirate? I think so. You're wearing pants right now. She's not wearing a dress. She's wearing, like, actual pants. So. You know, I'm like that, the one with the short hair pirate, because she yeah. always wears pants. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to judge you, no, you I klepto. Yeah, <laughs> 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 All right, so Kate wears the pants, walks off on Tom, and goes to Father Daniel's place. Mm -hmm. And Father Daniel is creepy, and I don't mean that in, like, a sleazy way. He's just, like, funny, quirky goofy, yeah. you know, we kind of like the guy talking about coffee and stuff like that. And it turns out that he, of course, has been overtaken by the English. Yep. And they ambush Kate and whatever. The thing that kills me about Kate, and this speaks to you, what you're saying about female pirates wearing the pants, it's, it's certain women in a man's world, is when she's captured by the pi by the English, not the pirates, by the English, my brain's not working today. It's no big. <laughs> when she's captured by the English... She offers to help that English soldier get rich. She tries to bribe him, whatever, which was interesting in the first place to see her take agency like yeah. that. And then the second thing that was interesting, and this happens twice in this episode, she is brutally physically abused. Yeah, and also she bribed him not with, like, sexual stuff. Exactly. With money. Yeah. A total dude move, just saying. No, total dude move. I, I totally agree with you. And, we, and Blackbeard even says it later in the episode yeah. that this is the new world. Money trumps everything. So to her, maybe she's seeing the same thing and says, you know what? Money trumps everything. I'm going to bribe this guy with money. The thing that sticks to me is it's so egalitarian in some ways, and women are treated so much like men in some ways. That they could get beat up. Exactly. Hardcore. Yes. Yeah. And buried alive. But also, hey, props to her for not giving in. Yeah. Because holy moly. I feel like she would have given in. I feel like she was minutes away from giving in because she knew death was imminent. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like she wasn't going to because she was screaming for a while and not even saying help or anything, just screaming. What is the what is the proper? I've never been buried alive. I don't. Yeah, I mean, me neither. Oh darn it! Well, then I shouldn't even ask. I was gonna say because I would feel like if you're buried alive in a coffin in that situation, screaming is not the best thing to do because you're using up more of your air and yeah. you only have a finite supply of oh, air. Oh man, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Sorry, oh, kids. Wow. Didn't mean to. Didn't mean yeah. to take it there. But, I guess banging me. You should. She should have banged. I mean, but but, but the, the, then, the soldiers were there, so they wouldn't have done anything. Yeah. Should have seen alone. Kill Bill. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Some just, voice just spoke from the heavens. <laughs> about Kill Bill. I haven't seen Kill Bill. Though. I haven't seen Kill Bill either. We'll probably get some comments about that. If you have, tell us what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, I feel like we're bad hosts for not watching <laughs> Kill Bill now. It's not about pirates, though. It's not about pirates. Yeah. We only do pirate stuff. Yep. Um, okay, but Kate goes to Father Daniel, barters with the coffee, has this cute relationship, gets captured, and then ends up getting buried. But before she gets buried, the other scene that was so uncomfortable to me to watch was the governor of Jamaica just brutally beating the crap out of her. Yeah, that was it, nuts. Did you get a sense of a little rapey intention with him, though, at one point? When she's on her back on the ground and he's kind of touching around her neck and her chest and stuff like that, he doesn't go outwardly into mm -hmm. any of it, and I don't remember the exact words he said, but he said something along the lines of, like, I can do whatever I want, or I'm in complete control, or something like that. And with him, it seemed a little more maybe sexual, even though it wasn't shown and it wasn't alluded to. I didn't feel that either, but I, I just thought he wanted to kill her, or like, kind of, um, not, um, just torture her. I like he like. enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bit of a sociopath but I didn't get or the sadist. Sexual thing. I don't know, but huh. maybe, maybe. Ma either way, he's he not a good, not that he's not that nice of a guy. No, he's not, because yeah. he did enjoy it. He really enjoyed burying her, and until they realized Blackbeard was coming, and we'll talk about Blackbeard in a minute. Until they realized Blackbeard was coming, he was taking great enjoyment in hearing her scream. Yeah. He liked that. Yeah. Which is, you know, loony. Little, yeah, totally loony, loony. But I guess this guy's been there before, and he's done stuff like this before. And even Blackbeard said. This guy knows how to get information out of people, yeah. so this is the thing. Well, he chopped some dude's head off that looked like Blackbeard, apparently, yeah. right? So yeah. he's been around the block. Which I want to know, did he chop the guy's head off who looked like the real historical Blackbeard with the actual Blackbeard, or did he chop a guy's head off who looked like Malkovich? 
I think the historical one because he said that he had the beard and everything. Yeah. And he doesn't have a. It's got a little beard. Which but. I've never understood. I'm sorry to bring it up every episode. I just don't know. I want it explained to me. Yeah. I'll, I'll take it at face value if it gets explained to me why he has a goatee and just not a beard. Just a throwaway thing. Something. You know? Oh, I needed to change my look so people don't recognize me. It's cooler. Accepted. Just say it's, it's cooler in my yeah. face. Whatever. Yeah. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot in Jamaica. It is hot in Santa Campana in Jamaica yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> I just want to know. Mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> But Kate, of course, as much as Kate is looked at as, as uh, in many ways, an egalitarian figure, here's the other thing about her being egalitarian when we're talking about this. And I know women are, in a way, second-class citizens on that island probably still. Yeah. Even though it's a little more egalitarian than a lot of places in the world at that time. But Kate is not only has sexual agency with what she does with Tom, she's got physical agency with the abuse she takes and everybody's cool with hitting a woman because it's just another pirate. Yeah. She also has economic agency in that she was the one with a crew to go down and trade with Father Daniel. It wasn't Blackbeard himself. It wasn't another businessman on the island. It was Kate. And she's the one who's responsible for bringing back food, bringing back you know, coffee, maybe whatever they would have ended up getting is interesting to see how much people trust her for truly important supplies. Yeah, I agree. It's pretty cool. Well, and she uh, good and she she pays. Yeah, good for her, but she pays the price. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then she comes back, and this is actually a good transition point with Kate because next we're going to talk about her husband and all that good stuff. But she comes back, and immediately, of course, well, hold on. When she's rescued, she makes out with Tom. Flat out right there. Yeah, immediately, yeah. So it tells me that there's obviously something more than just a sexual relationship, which at the start it looked like it was just a sexual relationship at the very start of this episode. But she makes out with the guy in a scary situation, so I'm thinking they probably don't want to get it on right now. She's just thankful and... She's alive and glad showing to see him. some emotion. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. showing any emotion or whatever. And maybe it's she's desperate to do whatever. I don't know. But she makes out with Tom, and then of course she comes back and runs right into the harms of her husband. She needs to make up her mind, man. She needs to go on Maury, man. Also, I feel like she's kind of fearless in that, like, she's blatantly making out with Tom, even though she has a husband. Like, but in public, these people could tell, hey, James, guess what? Well, remember in episode two, she already copped to Tom being in her bed. Yeah, even to though everybody. It, even though at that time it was a lie. Yeah. But, but maybe for her, it's like, you know what? Everybody thinks it anyways, yeah. so I got the best of both worlds here. I think the whole, like, trust in her is kind of getting to her head a little bit, how she's almost like a dude. It's getting to her head a little bit, and she needs to calm, calm it down. <laughs> woman to woman. <laughs> I'm going to woman Make to woman talk. Make up your mind. Calm down. <laughs> well, let's talk about making up her mind, because who is she going to choose? I know we're going dangerously into prediction territory already, but we saw it today in the episode, the the uh, relationship between Tom and James, slightly awkward, to me slightly funny because the audience knows what's going on and maybe the two of them don't know everything, but, well, Tom knows everything. Yeah. Maybe James just suspects it, but who does she pick between the two of them? I don't know. Like, I want her to just stick with James. He seems like a nice guy, and then Tom, I mean, he's... It, British, and he killed a bunch of British guys, so is he a bad guy now? But he's know. also a surgeon, he's also the doctor, he yeah. brings life literally with the baby that was delivered mm -hmm. today, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, to me, both of those two are relatively, so far, sympathetic characters, relative protagonists in a way, and I think that Kate is is the secret antagonist. The thing you were saying about being too big for her britches, too much to her head, Again, we're getting too far into predictions, but I think yeah. that may come up later based on what we saw today because she's playing both ends off the middle. Yeah. And she's using James for what she wants. She's using Tom for what she wants. She gets the entire island in trouble by going trading. And I know that's not her fault. I know she was ambushed. But still, leaving the island puts them at risk, and she put them at risk. And she's getting too big for her britches. So I yeah. think she may actually be a secret antagonist moving forward. Mm -hmm. and And... and Maybe as an audience, right now we say, well, who's she going to pick? What's she going to pick? Maybe as an audience, a week or two from now, we will be back right here saying, you know what? Neither one of them should pick her. Both those dudes need to, like, yeah, both those dudes good. need to go get a drink or something. Yeah. And, just like, be friends just, exactly. with each other. And there's plenty of whores on the island. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Yeah. There's plenty of sponges in the sea, if yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's what, yeah. there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a weird weird noise. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about the second half of the same story, and that is not Kate's point of view of it, but it is Blackbeard's 
point of view of it. Mm -hmm. And before we get to Blackbeard's point of view, let's talk about Blackbeard's first scene. Because he sees a vision, a specter. And it, it looked like you. Tall blonde girl. Wearing... I, I actually do cry tears of blood, too. <laughs> so, man, doppelganger. So is that, a, is that a, a bad comedy routine? Like, if you had done badly at the comedy club, and that you'd be here and there'd be tears of blood yeah, coming. Yeah, okay. like, it wasn't good, guys. Sounds therapeutic. Yeah, and, you know. How's that working out for you? Good for your skin, too. Oh, I bet. But, yeah. The old blood trick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear that's what all the celebrities are doing right now. Uh -huh. Um, it went from coconut oil to blood. Mm -hmm. uh, so we see the specter crying blood in the white dress. I, I think we initially mentioned it could have maybe been a wedding dress. I think it's a daughter because it was yelling, Father, Father, yeah. help. So maybe it's not a wedding or it's a daughter's wedding or something. Or going maybe on. it's the the mother of the, do of the child that was saying, Father, Father. Oh, interesting. I was thinking that because I feel like she looked too old to have that voice. Unless it was like the older version of her. So um, it's like the mother of the child yelling to the father who might be black Blackbeard. Beard? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I, I, excuse me, I just saw that it was maybe like a nightgown instead of a wedding dress. It mm -hmm. looked slightly more casual. But I don't know what wedding dresses look like in 1729, so Lord mm -hmm. knows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but either way, he sees this and he will end up talking to Tom about it. Which is interesting because Blackbeard plays his cards very carefully. And it... Very few moments has Blackbeard seemed weak in the first three episodes. What happened in episode two with the uh, assassins was totally orchestrated by him. We thought he w was weak or you know off guard or whatever. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. He orchestrated the whole thing. So everything he's done is to manipulate power and stuff like this. And these visions are one thing that it seems so far to us he has no control over. He doesn't know how to start them or stop them. He looks terrified of them. Yeah. And he's generally bewildered about what is going on he doesn't know what to do about him yeah it's no like a clue. crack in his stone of armor it, that's exactly thing. it yeah. everybody has a vulnerability or maybe more than one let's be honest but mm -hmm. everybody has like a vulnerability and this is his and to this point i think the only person who knows about it i might be wrong is tom i think so too i don't think he's told any maybe salima yeah but i don't think so but i don't think we've seen that conversation yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and maybe he's hiding it from salima for a different reason because yeah. of his interest in salima mm -hmm. Um, but he tells Tom, and they talk about it, and Tom, ostensibly to help treat him, wants to talk about it. But it still shows to me that Blackbeard and Tom, or at least from Blackbeard's perspective, Tom is a little closer than I think Blackbeard would like to admit. Mm -hmm. And Blackbeard trusts him and likes him more than he would like to admit. Maybe Blackbeard's, maybe it's a means to an end for Blackbeard, and he wants to get something else out of Tom. But the way he treated Tom with the specter, talking about the visions, and the way he treated Tom on the boat. Yeah, how he just yes. did what Tom wanted to do, basically. Because yeah. he even said that it was mostly his idea. Yeah, it was mostly his idea. And I can't remember the exact words he said. It was mostly his idea, but, like, I had the flex of uh, energy. or we, That's not the word, but whatever yeah. it was. It's like his idea with my accents is yeah. basically what he said. Mm -hmm. which, I, which I took to mean it was Tom's idea to make the ambush and Blackbird's idea to kill everybody and do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I understand that. Um, but that's the thing. And even when, even when Tom stowed away on the boat in the first place, there's a, there's a punishment for stowaways. Tom doesn't face it. Nothing, yeah. He's special. I know he's the doctor on the island and they need him and stuff like that, but he's still special in the sense that Blackbeard trusts him just a little bit more yeah. than he wants to trust everybody else. Did this remind you, have you ever seen Con Air? Uh, a while ago. I can hear Stephen laughing right now in the booth, our engineer Stephen. <laughs> Here's the reason I say that. John Malkovich, of course, is in Con Air. He's Cyrus the Virus Grissom. And there are points where the virus is, is by the way, guys, watch this movie. It's literally, <laughs> literally, literally one of the best movies ever. Okay. I feel like somebody else has just said that. I, I'm, I'm kind of being facetious. Greatest role Steve Buscemi has ever played. You no, know, it really is. It's an unbelievable movie. I'm being totally sarcastic, but it's really entertaining. Watch this okay. movie. But the reason I mention this is, for people who have watched it, it's a similar character point for Malkovich in Blackbeard and in Cyrus the Virus Grissom in the sense that a man with complete control and power of a situation and who's very intimidating, very domineering, very in control and has all the cards is bizarrely trusting of somebody much, much lower than him. Yeah. Tom has no influence on this island. The character Nicolas Cage plays, Poe, has really no influence on Con Air at the time the virus kind of trusts him and respects him. But these characters Malkovich plays, maybe it's a personality trait or it's just a weird commonality between these two things. These two characters are very trusting and very impressed by somebody who almost anybody else wouldn't give a second thought to. Yeah. 
And Blackbeard gives a second thought to Tom on the boat with the visions, with the plan to help Kate escape. And now Tom is very quickly going to become, on some level, a right-hand man for him. Mm -hmm. Has to, especially with what happened to Charlie. Yeah, I was just, just thinking maybe he might replace Charlie with the second yeah. man, second in command. Why not? Once just, he finds out what Charlie's been doing. We're just doing predictions all night yeah, long. <laughs> we're going to lose all our predictions, yeah. and when it comes up, we'll be like, oh, sorry. We don't have anything else. Um yeah. <laughs> but the other okay let's talk about the boat comes to Blackbeard's uh, crew comes to the island comes to get Kate the sword fight happens the because of course it does why not this is a pirate show yep. uh, Blackbeard walks out in the hood with a little bit of a beard mask. yeah with like a mask of some sort yeah. and then pulls up the two guns and, and right through the heart right through the heart I'm sorry it's 1729 and I'm no gun expert, Lord knows, but I do know that in 1729, the chances of whipping them out like you're drawn in the Wild West, and then two and two through two different hearts, not that likely. Listen, he's Blackbeard, though. I, I knew you were going to say that. He does, he's magical almost, you know? He's I supposed know. to be dead. Look at him. I knew you were, it was like a Walker, Texas Ranger scene. There's 15 soldiers and two of these guys, and of course, of course, uh, the governor of Jamaica comes back and all 15 soldiers are strewn about he's dead. dead. <laughs> of course they are. Yep. <laughs> and they bring Kate back, and the interesting thing with Blackbeard, when they bring Kate back, and this is a tiny thing, but I think it matters. As they bring Kate back after this fight, she runs to her husband, James. Tom kind of gets off sheepishly, and we know that everybody knows on some level. Yep. And then, I don't know if you noticed, but Blackbeard gets off the boat, walks up the walks up land uh, behind them, and everybody's clapping in that scene, and we're kind of focused on Kate and Tom. Mm -hmm. Blackbeard, in, in the background is kind of like waving and kind of like, you know, thank you, thank you, like sort of taking in the yeah. adulation and the praise, which is probably cool, but it reminds me in episode two of that situation where uh, everybody was questioning how democratic Blackbeard really is, how how much power he really wants to hold and hang on to, and when I know it's little, but when you start taking in the praise and believing what people are saying about you, it's a quick it's fall. It's going to get to your head, man. Exactly. Yeah. It's a quick fall from humility all the way down to cockiness or, yeah. or just a desire to keep that power mm -hmm. and it wasn't over the top it wasn't anything he went crazy on but it was he's taking it it's still there exactly yeah when you take it in there's a there's there's a there's a time for taking it in and there's a time for letting yeah. somebody else have it yeah i mean and, and these people are equals yeah. if we're pirates we're equals if you're gonna clap for me and we're equals true equals i'm probably not gonna be like hey how you yeah. doing thanks appreciate That's that me yep. you, i think you just go about your business so it tells me that blackbeard is this is not a democracy, and we probably knew that. But Blackbeard obviously is entrenched in power, is going to do whatever he can do to keep it, which we've seen already. And little things like that tell me where his head's at yeah. to do things like that. So go back and watch it. It's really short. I will. Kate's like hugging her husband. Tom's kind of coming up, and then Blackbeard's literally in the back just kind of doing one of these. It's like a two-second clip. I don't know why I noticed uh -huh. it. But. Well, hey, that's good, though. It's probably like a little seed growing about, you know, there you go. how he's crazy. Nice metaphor. Yeah. Really on the metaphor thing today, the so stone thing. I don't know. Sorry. No, it's cool. Keep. Get, you know what? I'm okay. gonna clap for you. I'll put a little adulation on you. And you I can, could do this. Exactly. Because... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Bunch of people are clapping for Kelly. I almost called you Kate because we've said the word Kate like a hundred times. So, yeah. Week, so, yeah. It's all right. You're not Kate. You're Kelly. Okay. Let's talk about our third topic. Is kind of everybody else. <laughs> we've got Kate and Tom and uh, and James. We've got Blackbeard and then we've got. Everybody the others. else. Yep. Now, there's a lot of everybody else today. Yep. And the first of which, and maybe the least of which, is Nellie. <sighs> have, have you ever been pregnant and not realized it and dropped a baby out I the mean, next day? Maybe. <laughs> maybe right now. <laughs> but it could be a food baby. Is, I was going to say, is it a pregnancy or just a burrito? Yeah. Yeah. Ta I did have Taco Bell. There you go. But, and I mean, uh, this I don't understand because we haven't seen a lot of supernatural in this show. Mm -hmm. I know that the specters, the ghost, whatever the vision Blackbeard has, something supernatural will come of that. But besides that, it's been very this-worldly. Yeah. So... Was it, how did she not know she's pregnant? Was it like a premature baby? Did she, so she said she hasn't done it? Like, did she, well, she implied I mean, that kind of, right? I don't remember. But the, that's her job. No, I mean, it's her job. Right? And I, I realize why she would be pregnant. But what I don't realize is if you're nine months pregnant, you know you're nine months. You're Listen, huge. Listen, there's a whole TV show about this. But aren't those people really fat? 
No, not to me. I mean, I I'm just asking seriously. I don't know. I've never watched the <laughs> show. Um, I just know, like, they just are in a bathtub and all of a sudden baby comes out. But I think sometimes there's some people, but yeah, she's really skinny. But some people are just, you don't know. Really? Yeah. You do, How do you not know? People are just not all there sometimes. I agree with that 100%. But <laughs> how do you know? This is a human in your stomach. Yeah. It's just a, a big stomach pain that just doesn't go away for nine months. <laughs> That's what some people think. All right. Well, let's take it at that. Let's yeah. just take it at face value. In, if they show us supernatural later, we'll cross that bridge when <laughs> we come to it, if there's some immaculate conception or whatever. But let's take it at face value for what it is, which is she just really didn't know, and a baby was born. Which she's is not all, I mean, look at her job. She's not, she's not smart. And to be a prostitute on a pirate island in 1729, you got to be ass for it. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I can hear Stephen laughing again. I don't mean any sexual asking for it. I just mean, like, your life. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, and we, But we do learn with some of these characters that they were actually on ships that Blackbeard had commandeered, and they chose to come to this island. James mentions that at one point. Yeah. Um, and I believe Nellie's actually in the room when they mentioned that. Nellie was one of the ones who was going to India, so maybe, okay, I take that back. We do actually understand how she got there. I'm sorry, Nellie. I'd like to uh, send you a personal apology. That's my fault. I screwed up. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's move on from that baby. Um, the other thing that's funny about that baby, before we move on, though, is Tom talking about, he comes in, says, I'm going to treat you, I'm a doctor, and she's like, have you done this before? And he's yeah. like, no, but I, I read about it in a book. Pause. It was a really good book. Yeah. What? Weird. Just weird points of, like, funny. I, I wasn't, I wasn't mad. I laughed at it, yeah. but just weird points of funny. Um, the bigger secondary characters, though, are the secondary group of pirates. Salima and Charlie and those people. Those people, it sounds like it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, first off, the woman, one of the pirate women, we still don't have a name on her. She's like a main character, too. That I've seen. Yeah. We'll go on IMDb. That's our fault. We'll go on IMDb and yeah, look that up because there's they've never said her name. But they need to say names more often. That's a one issue I have with this <laughs> show because just say the name. There's too many characters. Especially her. Yeah. Especially her. They've never. I I know they've never said her name because I would have gotten it. Yeah. Um. Everybody else. Charlie Salima. We got that all. So her, the third pirate, mm -hmm. uh, digging around in the sand and uncovering something. Remember that in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then she comes in and and takes um gets into a fight with Charlie. And Charlie accuses her of stealing some of the stuff from the petrol and says, you've stolen this stuff and whatever's going on. And then the first mind-boggling scene to me is as they're mad at each other, she reaches down and does a little grabbing, and it, it turns into sex. Yep. I don't know. I mean, if we all had a relationship like that where you, like, hate each other, but you're, like, attracted. I think maybe it was, like, play fighting, you know? Like, you stole something. So it was playing Ooh, from the bad. start. Yeah, you know? <laughs> how, how did that go again? Could you do that again? Oh, you bad. You've been a bad girl. <laughs> you know? That's probably what she he was doing. And she's like, yeah, I've been a bad girl. <laughs> that was hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. I thought I thought they were legitimately mad. I didn't get playing I at all. I thought it was at until first, very... But then once they started doing that, I was like, oh, I guess he just was messing with her. Oh, okay. I thought he wasn't messing with her. I thought he was serious at the start. Mm -hmm. Oh, but he could have been messing. Maybe Charlie think... is. Maybe that's his game. That's his like move. Yeah. His he move is says he's gonna kill you too, and then <laughs> get, whoops. Get right up in a girl's face, <laughs> threaten to kill her, get serious, and then it's on. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna get a lot. In this episode, though, because he gets it from her, and then he gets it from Salima. Before we talk about that, we've got to talk about this first pirate, because she not only does this with the buried treasure and Charlie, she then goes to the prostitute's lair. What was her, the main, pro, the main one? I, th I want to say Starts it was an, Rose. I think, oh, maybe. I think it was Rose. I could be wrong about that. It started with an <clears throat> M, but maybe not. Anyways. It's not Nelly. Whoever no, it is, no. is not Nelly, because Nelly's busy with child. Yeah, it is. Ro Rose has a ruby. Yep. There you go. Rose has a ruby. Down. <laughs> yeah. Rose did have a ruby, but not for long. Mm -hmm. So why is this pirate stealing jewels? Just purely selfish reasons because she wants she wants the gold. Give her the gold. I think so. I mean I Did don't... you did you understand that? No. Meme. Have you ever seen the YouTube video of, of the leprechaun in Mobile, Alabama? No. Oh. oh! Oh, the he's like a little guy. I don't know. I oh my Never mind. okay. I'll you know what? I'll tweet it to you later. Oh <laughs> man! <laughs> The things you learn on this show about you. How do you? How are you a comedian when you haven't seen that video? I don't know. Oh my. Okay, let's too move many, on. Too many viral videos. Too much stimulation. Yeah. <laughs> this one's good. Okay. You're, you're gonna cry laughing. I'll at watch this one. it. You're yeah. And it's like, uh, I'll just. You know what? 
I'll just I'll tweet okay, it to you. Okay. We're so off topic today; it's <laughs> ridiculous. Okay, so she's just doing it for pr for purely selfish reasons. You think? I think so. I mean, there was no you couldn't. We didn't see any other hints of another motive, you know? She just seems like typical pirate, you yeah. know? Typical pirate. Or maybe she's trying to plan an escape at some point later, and yeah. she needs resources. Backup, yeah. yeah. She mm -hmm. needs something, or she needs blackmail or whatever. Yeah. Um, but she does that. She steals the poor ruby from Rose. Such Skills. an underhanded, yeah. Skills. Like a, like a child pickpocket in, like, some foreign city that we always, yeah. like, hear about, but I don't know if it actually happens as much as we think. Yeah. It's just like an old, it's like a kind of an urban legend. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to get your stuff stolen from you on the subway. Still, you're going to keep that, your money in that weird travel thing. I've done, it, yeah. I've done it, man. I've done it. I've done it. But anyway. <laughs> I live that life. <laughs> Gangster. <laughs> and then we've got Charlie and Salima. This is the interesting relationship between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Because when Blackbeard goes to rescue Kate, he tells Charlie, look after Sal Salima, whatever, and then whispers to him. And we don't even hear the whisper. Yeah. So we are only to speculate what he was saying, mm -hmm. which was an interesting way to go about that. To, to to this point, we know everything as an audience. It's not like we're following only one character. Mm. So to know everything, and then all of a sudden, blatantly Wait. to our face, we don't get something. Yeah, is an interesting decision that I actually kind of liked because it's going to open up a lot of stuff. I think it was better for us to learn just like how Salima learned. You yeah. know, made more of like a, a mo like what? Yeah. You no know, reaction, abso reaction. Absolutely. And maybe and maybe it w maybe what Charlie did to Salima wasn't even actually what Blackbeard whispered. Mm -hmm. Maybe he didn't whisper. To kill her. Maybe yeah. he certainly doesn't, didn't whisper to have sex with her, I don't think. No, I don't think so. I mean, he can't get it, right? That's <laughs> that's that's the thing. She won't give it up to Blackbeard. And then but Charlie's let, all gonna... of a sudden, how, does she even know him that well, Charlie? Well, she did stab him. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to cross the line violently with somebody, you might as well cross it physically, too. If you're yeah. going to stab a guy, then you have sex with it's him. It's kind of like an apology, like, sorry, here. <laughs> 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 Steven likes that one. I do, too. If I'm going to get stabbed, I want a little something in return. Yeah. So, okay, I understand Charlie's point of view. But that scene is so bizarre to me that Charlie hints around ordering to kill her, mm -hmm. to first protect her, then to kill her, then she turns the knife on him. He gets stabbed. I thought he was a goner, the way they did that scene. Yeah. Um, but he, it just was like a flesh wound. Yeah, it's just his pancreas. No yeah. big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not a goner. And then he does her. And then he's gone. Yeah. It's weird. Also, Salima, like, she's terrified of people and stuff, too. Yeah. That was really... I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's about. that's bizarre. But that's the thing, too. So Salima and Blackbeard are in this house together. I assume yeah. she lives with Blackbeard. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Even though she's not giving it up. It's like every other marriage out there. Am I right, guys? Hey! <laughs> okay. Uh, but, no, that's an interesting thing with her because she lives in the house with Blackbeard. We've talked about Blackbeard's desire to keep power. Now, Salima, in a way, could almost be like a queen that doesn't want to associate with subjects. I know I'm looking too deeply into that, but these two are isolating themselves, Blackbeard and Salima, and becoming royal, yeah. in a sense. Mm -hmm. And becoming English in the way they don't want. They hate the king. They hate England, and yet in some ways, they're kind of going down that path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You become what you don't want to be. Yeah. I, I think, I, but I think she's more terrified than, I don't think she wants to do this to herself. I feel like it's like a, a medical issue. Or, or like anxiety mental, or mental. something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it could, I don't know why, though. There's got to be a reason. phobia, right? Because she didn't even want to leave the house. Yeah. I yeah. don't know what's going on. I mean, I know life is good for her there, but if danger's coming, you want to evacuate. Because it's not going to be good much longer. No, it won't. Although now it, we know it turned out okay. Yeah, yeah. But no, when it, when she did it, it wasn't looking good at all. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I don't know either. It was weird. That was a very weird scene with her and Charlie. We haven't seen tons of Charlie yet. He's kind of been the henchman or whatever. And then he factored in big time in this episode. Mm -hmm. He had sex with two different women. He was stabbed by one of them. Oh. He's He's... Well, the other important scene with him is he's very critical of Blackbeard. And he's very critical of the story he told, the biblical story, of Blackbeard not going to give him the power. Yeah. Which is another thing with Blackbeard and power that we know he's keeping it. Mm. I mean, we had no doubt. Yeah. But he's definitely keeping it, and Charlie knows that now. I think everybody does. Well, but Charlie then directly told Salima. Yeah. And Salima got it with Charlie. Yeah. So... Well, you know what? I'm going to save that for predictions. We've already done enough oh. predictions early on. I'm yeah. going to save one for predictions. Really quick, though. Yeah. Uh, Fletch sees a guy 
uh, on the island. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just what? wanted to mention that I forgot about it. That was like kind of a weird thing. Like, was that a, do you think, it wasn't a specter. It wasn't a guy either. It was like a troll looking, it was like Bigfoot. It was like a dirty look. I just thought he was a dirty pirate. It's like a it was like a homeless guy. Bathed in, yeah, You exactly. know what it was like? It was, I forgive me for saying this. It was like Adam Sandler's caddy in Billy Madison. Do you remember that guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was exactly like but that But a guy. bigger beard and a yeah. hat. Yeah, but it was like, it looked like Zach Galifianakis if he was with Tom Hanks on the island yeah. in Castaway. Yeah. Yeah, okay, just so we're on the same page. Uh, or like, I feel like um, in Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, Blackbeard there? Yeah. Like that, but just really dirty and just maybe that's the on. Maybe that's the guy the governor of Jamaica killed. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Maybe, but that's, his head's there. Oh, oh no, it's, it's a ghost. It's a specter. Oh. Maybe it's the ghost of the guy the governor of Jamaica killed. Maybe. I don't know why he would be on Santa Campana. No. But. Maybe he's maybe he's the dad of the father. We're doing a lot of random We're doing a lot of what ifs. Uh, for the record, the real Blackbeard in history, when he was killed, he was killed on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. His body was thrown into the, uh, into the Outer Banks, into the channel there. Legend has it, it swam around the ship three times or whatever. Wow. And they took the head and they put the head on a stake in a mm. port. But the legend has it that the body of Blackbeard, the ghost of the body of Blackbeard, still haunts the Outer Banks of North Carolina, looking for his head and looking for people to recognize him. And because he doesn't have a head, no one does. That's, that's, that's the cliff notes That's version. pretty awesome. So, th so even though this is not North Carolina, this is... The Caribbean, the West yeah. Indies, uh, and Santa Campana is a made-up place, you know. Even though that's not historically accurate, the story still takes on that history. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was actually glad to see that. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. So, but yeah, I don't understand Fletch's vision. I don't he, know. You know what? He doesn't either. <laughs> <laughs> he has no clue. All right. Uh, you know what? Let's go to news and gossip. Let's do it. After all right, we've got two things for you guys. First off, I want to say we were trying to get Yasmin Almasri in here last week. Obviously, we couldn't do it because of the delay, uh, because the show was off last weekend, and it was it came on sort of late. So we're hoping to do that in the future. In the meantime, though, Spinoff Online talked to Yasmin Almasri, who plays Salima. Uh, they've got a long interview with her. We'll post it up on YouTube, put a link up on the YouTube. It's a good interview. Two things of note for you, Kelly. The first one is they asked her about the challenges of filming Crossbones on location in Puerto Rico with the heat and all that sort of good stuff. And she responded, <laughs> God bless her. She said, I don't want to be bad, but there were moments where everybody was bitching about how hot it was and there were a lot of mosquitoes. Once I was literally attacked by mosquitoes. There's something worse than mosquitoes called mahe. They don't tell you about those until you're bitten by one of them. You get 10 bites, one after the other. I had a lot of these, and it was surreal because you had to forget about that and stay focused in your character. Sometimes it's great because it's good for the scene, and sometimes it's very hard. <laughs> she said when you share it with everybody on the yeah. island, but everybody goes through it, it's not as bad as you think. Yeah. So She came from an interesting background. I believe she's Jordanian, I want to say. Oh, wow. And came from the, somewhere in the Middle East, came from that background, went to Paris to study, went to London to study. So she has seen a lot in the world. Yeah. So. I have a feeling a few mosquitoes and stuff aren't too bad for her, but it does sound torturous. Yeah, yeah. annoying. <laughs> Very annoying. And the second thing, they asked about Malkovich, what it's like working with him on the series, and she said it was great, obviously. Yeah. Who, who wouldn't want to work with Malkovich? Yeah. Uh, said he's a good teacher. She said it wasn't easy for me to be on the set, though. It's very intimidating to be a woman on a pirate set. There aren't a lot of women there. To be character and hold on to my sensuality and being a woman in the show was not easy, but having John Malkovich was one of the biggest things that helped me because he's a friend and humble and a real actor. He loves his work, he loves his lines, he goes through them all the time, and he loves to be directed. Which I found very interesting because uh, Malkovich has a great reputation, but when you're acting for decades and very, very good at it, you got to get to a point where you know what you're doing. Yeah. So if Malkovich loves to be directed, that's Still, awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's that's awesome. Yeah, that would be fun to work with somebody like that who has that knowledge and has that base, but is also like, you know what? Tell me how I screwed up. Yeah, I want to get better. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Uh, not like Blackbeard. Not he's the opposite he's like of Blackbeard. Equal, like all right, I'm gonna listen to you. Tr he's actually equal, yeah. exactly. Now, not such a cool thing. Crossbones hits a new low on the ratings. Oh. <sighs> Premiere started out very strong, stronger than they expected. Episode 2 dipped a lot. Episode 3, because of the week off, I think, yeah. dipped again. Friday night, only 3.17 million viewers watched the show, which for the big three networks, ABC, NBC, CBS, was the lowest total of any show that night. Crossbones also has the best lead-in from Dateline. Dateline is the most viewed Friday night show, and then this week, Crossbones was the least viewed across wow. the board. So that's not a good thing. 
Um, but we'll, it's early on. We'll see if they can regain their ratings. And I mean, we know we're going to get the rest of the uh, this season, at least, hopefully. But yeah. we'll see what happens. It's too early to call it. Uh, one thing I will say, though, Friday nights in the summer are tough. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get preempted a lot. They're going to preempt it for baseball and stuff moving forward. So when you have a week off, I don't know how many people come back. Yeah, because they don't know when sometimes. They don't, yeah. And then you like plan your week around this, and then it doesn't come there, so you get mad. I plan know? my week around crossbones, too. Yeah. 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 Good to know we're on the same page. <laughs> All right, let's do some predictions. All right, cool. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. All right. I'll give you mine first as yeah. you think about yours. Yeah. My prediction, because I almost said it, it was on the tip of my tongue a couple minutes ago, and it is this. I believe that after Charlie had the discussion with Salima about how Blackbeard isn't going to relinquish power and the biblical, you know, tear, tale, the allegory, I believe that Salima, whether or not she's romantically attracted to Charlie or physically attracted to him, I think Salima at some point will recognize Blackbeard's renegade ways and how dangerous he is, and she will side with Charlie and try to help Charlie take power in Santa Campana, and she will go from being Blackbeard's love interest, confidant, friend, to being Charlie's mole. All right. I agree. I, I, could, I could deal with that. Who knows more about Blackbeard than Salima? Yeah. Nobody. Exactly. I think um, Blackbeard's going to get mad at Salima for doing what she did, but I don't know if, he, I don't know if he's going to kill her, but maybe torture her? I don't know do something bad to her because I feel like because he's been trying to get that for a while and mm -hmm. for her to just give it up, it up to, hey man to when, you, when you put in the work yeah yeah I'm there so, I think that's what's gonna happen maybe I can't wait to see yeah. what happens next episode because that very last scene the last two seconds was the best of the whole episode for me yeah her reaction to him coming in and then his reaction to her reaction yeah wonderful it was a lot, like, I feel like he doesn't, you, well, I feel like he doesn't know what happened. She I don't, clearly. I think he knows something's dead. wrong, and yeah. he doesn't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I think he, he, he could tell immediately, but he doesn't know the specifics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's been around the block. He knows, he knows some stuff, but yeah. All right, as we get going today, uh, social links, Twitter and stuff like that, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at Holly Weirdo on Twitter and Instagram. And and good old Kelly McInerney performs comedy quite a bit, so the next time you do that, bring it into the show, man. Sure, will do. Bring a bit or two maybe also. Do, do you do any jokes about pirates? No, uh, I do lots of like poo jokes and fart jokes. Oh my lord. <laughs> okay, so on that note. Work. Let's move right along. <laughs> I'm at Bobby DeMiro on Twitter, at Mr. Bobby DeMiro on Instagram. Remember, guys, pick up Maria Menunos' new book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness, How I Lost 40 Pounds, and You Can Too, and kept it off, and you can too. Maybe I should read the whole title as we get going. <laughs> and remember, if you're on iTunes, hit subscribe, and please rate us, review. We want to know what to do better, what you like, etc. And if you're on YouTube, keep commenting below this video. We love it. Thank you guys so much. For Kelly, I'm Bobby. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.